Well, hello again, it's Justin from Brisbane Yamaha, and we're just gonna walk you through a couple of Yamahas. But look, this is our stock and trade, and uh, this is the product. This is the one that we've traded on for so many years now, and look, um, we just can't talk highly enough of the Yamaha. The fact that they do have the lowest warranty return rate in the industry, the fact that they do have the best resale value, and still the largest market share. Let's just have a quick look at the range, and we'll talk about the pros and cons as we go. Um, but look, let's just start with the single horsepower four strokes now. This is where the range starts. The four, five, and six horsepower, identical motor. It all comes down to the state of tune. But these ones are designed to be a lightweight entry level motor, 27 kilos. The beauty of these ones with the little four strokes is you don't have to panic guys, you can lay them down. So they'll lay down either way, they've got an anti-lag valve in them, brilliant idea. And these ones here will suit just about anybody that wants to keep a boat either unregistered, a small Zodiac, something like that. We run a little four horsepower up at Sweers Island on a Polycraft and it pushes two blokes around in that, no worries at all. So don't be afraid of whether you have enough horsepower or not but they really are a leader in that market. This is the new 20 that's just come out onto the market. This one is actually a derivative of our new lightweight 25 that won all those international awards a couple of years ago. 57 kilos, but it's actually batteryless fuel injection on this little baby. So you even get trolling function on a 20 horsepower outboard. Same as with the little reverse flush on them these days. So it's got the cold flush fitting. You're not worried about the rabbit's ears, but it's made it nice and light and nice and smooth. Not that the Yammy's had a problem with smoothness or quietness, but with these batteryless fuel injection now, it can't get any quieter and any smoother. And just show them that little handle there, Dan. I'll just test that there. They've also even got a troll function and that speed. So if you like to troll while you're out on the dams and having fun, don't forget that we've got the troll function built into that beautiful ergonomic handle and it's just a Yamaha, that's what you use. That's the most reliable one on the market. This is our 50 horsepower four stroke. They're all four stroke these days. Nobody's doing two stroke, no one of any reputation anyway. The four stroke Yamaha though, what is unique about this, this is actually our version of a 60. So it's detuned, but it's four cylinders rather than three cylinders. So it's a thousand cc or 996, but four cylinders as opposed to three. There is another brand that offer the same specifications and slightly cheaper. It's got a black cow, but it's made in China. If you want something to last a little longer than the five or six years, this is where you'll go. It's got the four cylinders, but everything on it, as we've always said, is made in Japan. They're using their YDC30 alloy. We can't talk about that enough. And this one, every component, they cast their own blocks, they put it together. And this block here is actually used as a 50, a 60 and a 70. And that's why again, it's a class leading product with it. But when you're having a look at your 50 horsepower, just make sure that the one you're getting quoted on is made in Japan. Make sure that the gauges are made in Japan. Make sure that it's offering a full warranty on there. Make sure that the block is cast in Japan. Make sure that it's assembled in Japan. The Japanese do it best, and especially Yamaha. This is the one we love. This one's the, Ever, uh, the F70. This one has an extra row of valves, but also runs the high thrust gearbox. So if you're worried that a lightweight motor won't cut it, that a lightweight motor won't be able to give you the performance that you need, think again. This is the industry leader. This is the class leader. And this one here, we're getting better than three and a half K per litre. Fuel economy matters these days, guys. We understand that, but you lack nothing in, in performance but what you're gaining is less than 120 kilos on your transom. And this one here is the biggest of the 1,000 cc range. Just over here, Dan, swing with us. Just to show you as well, that's the 60. We talked about the 50, that's the 60. Again, just to stay to tune, but the same thing again, the class leading technology. Have a talk to the guys that are up in the day tree, the fishing tree guides. See if anybody else is getting 6,000 hours on an F60 the way that they are up there. This is the sort of thing that you need. If it's for a small boat and it's your family, this is the one to bring you home. This is the F90. Now this is a personal favorite. 1.8 liters of pure delight, single overhead cam, but 16 valves. None of this eight valve rubbish. If you can't build a twin cam engine now or, six to, or four valves per cylinder, you're never gonna be able to do it. The world's moved on. 16 valves or four valves per cylinder, single overhead cam. The weight is incredibly light, but again, at cruising speeds, better than three kilometers per litre. And look, we'll fit an F90 to a 5.6 metre glass boat for a full family. So don't let anybody talk you in and out of torque. This thing has torque. This thing, check your gearbox ratios when you're having a little look at that sort of thing. Have a look at the F90 now. 
1.8 litres or 1,832cc with the GP Talon prop. Again, props ain't props. This is, the, this is patented technology with the STS, and this is the one, again, that you should use. Available in 20-inch and 25-inch legs, but the F90, again, class-leading technology. When Yamaha bring out a new model, they always set the bar for the others. Come and have a look at the F90. Now, this is the 115. Uh, this is one of my personal favourites. We'll run this on a 5.8 metre glass boat again, and no worries at all. Same 1832cc uh, engine, but a twin cam 16 valve instead of a single overhead cam. We've now gone to dual overhead cams, but again, everything that you need in there, four valves per cylinder, great economy, great mid-range torque, which is something a lot of people don't want to talk about with them. And again, with our gauges, you would have seen a previous YouTube with them. We'll always fit a land gauge with these little babies, and that way you've got your fuel flow, your troll function, and everything else. Most other companies now want you to run what they call NMEA, and they want to run it to your sounder. Your sounder's for looking for fish and GPS locations. Guys, you don't need virtual gauges. Use the Yamaha gauges, and then use your sounder for what your sounder was intended. The 115, again, very, very hard to beat. Built with, again, the Yamaha reliability. I can't emphasize the YDC30 alloy enough. This is the one, again, using the STS Alloy GP prop, and it's going to, again, get the performance that we need. When we talk about legendary engines, this is the one the commercial operators use. I know there's other brands out there that have got a couple of hundred cc more, but again, eight valves per cylinder. Seriously, guys, this is where the action is. 2.68 litres, 16 valves, but again, commercial operators are expecting 5,000 hours out of these babies. This is the one again that you want, the 150. This one here comes with the stainless SDS prop, Dan, if you want to show them that. And that's the one with the soft clutch, or they call them the hush props. Again, Yamaha came with that first to the market. That one there ensures that they drop in and out of gear very, very softly, very, very gently. And what it does is it, it, it uh, endures or it makes the life of the, end, the gearbox a lot longer than what you'd expect on any other brand. You know, we don't need to do offset gearboxes on these things. Again, one of the other manufacturers decided to ride their own way. The best way to describe an offset gearbox to use that and reduction gearboxes is a little bit like a fat guy riding a bike, really. And what he does is he uses a bigger gear because it makes it easier for him. If you've got enough torque, have a look at your gear ratios. A straight drive means it's a lot easier to maintain. You get a lot longer out of the hours, but it's because we're not trying to create something out of nothing the engine produces the torque. Everyone talks about horsepower and outboards, but forgets to talk about the torque. And torque is the pushing power. And that's why Yamaha, we don't need to replace things. We don't need to do reduction gearboxes, things like that. There's no need to do that because this thing has plenty of mid-range torque. It'll do everything you need again. And again, the Yamaha, that's where you'll come home. There's a reason why more commercial operators in Australia and indeed the world use Yamaha outboards. When it comes to our families, and we're all fathers, we all have kids, we all want to be using the Yamaha. The V6s, the 4.2, this is the one you should all be buying now. We use the same block for the 225, the 250 and the 300. 253 kilos, sleeveless bores, and again, we've got commercial operators, Paddy Diamond up on the Sunshine Coast, BL Fishing Charters on the Gold Coast. A lot of our guys are running these motors. We're doing 5,000 plus hours, reusing the fly-by-wire throttles. Yamaha don't offer anything other than that on their 4.2 range. So it's DEC, drive-by-wire, and we're operating 5,000 hours, swapping out the motors and getting 5,000 hours again on exactly the same set of controls and gauges. That's something Yamaha's famous for. Now have a look at these ones here. We're running a 1.75 to one gearbox ratio on those. You wanna talk about torque, that's where it is. No, re no need for a reduction gearbox at this point here. We're running 1.75 to one because the torque on these things is absolutely phenomenal. The fuel economy is second to none. And these ones here, I can't emphasize enough you want YDC30. I know there's a newer member on the market. Again, we're not allowed to name names, but they're black. And they don't even use an anode inside the engine block anymore because they're saying that they've got their alloy technology down pat. They're not famous for being corrosion resistant. Let's call it what it is. If you're after longevity, if you're gonna keep your outboard for a long time, don't be replaced by anything else. Start with Yamaha. Reliability starts here. It's an ethos. When you buy a Yamaha, 
you're buying the same company that have shares in Toyota. This is like putting a Land Cruiser on the back of your outboard. What we do is we all make excuses for buying something other than the benchmark. This is your benchmark. These V6s are still the market leader. They're still the best on performance and more importantly, the best on reliability. Start having a look in your used market. See what you can find secondhand. See if any of the other big brands can compare with the hours and the resale value of these V6 Yamahas. Look, I hope you've enjoyed the, the tour. I'd love to have showed you the 425, uh, but I don't have a trailer boat that the 425 fits on to show you. But again, interestingly, with the Ibex Awards again, have a look at that one there. It's just won another innovation award again, and we'll show you a link to how many international awards Yamaha have won, more than any other marine manufacturer. It is absolutely staggering when you dig just a little deeper than the hype, dig a little bit deeper than these YouTube videos, dig a little deeper than your mate down the pub saying he got a great deal on an outboard, have a look at them. Yamaha have won more international design and technology awards than any other manufacturer. These guys are serious about outboards and they're serious about your safety and reliability. I would not trust my family in any other motor other than a Yamaha. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon. Cheers.